right you guys see here thank you so much for clicking to join me in today's video it's been a minute since I have chronicled my sewing make so here we are today we're going to be discussing everything that I've recently sewn and I think the last time I did this it was in the summer and it was all of my beginner friendly makes that I made in the summer it's been a few months now so we may not go that far back but I can at least share with you the things that I made September and October and the very beginning of November aka last night so the first oh and I don't have all of these makes because they're in the wash or the dirty clothes because I'm wearing them a lot so we'll kick things off with my concert fit so my husband and I kicked off our 10 year wedding anniversary celebration. Our anniversary is actually this week, the week that you are watching this video. Um, but we kicked things off a little early by attending an R&B concert for two of our, two of my favorite artists, one of his favorites. So I made a DIY cow neck top. I used a tutorial off of YouTube, a five minute tutorial. Um, and I made this beautiful cow neck top um very sexy the back was out had strap across the back the skin was showing the melanin was glowing i felt really good now i used a drapable charmeuse the same drapable charmeuse that i made the dress to attend my brother's wedding this summer i used some scrap that i had from that project that project that top literally required a yard less than a yard and once again that tutorial was quick and easy with three measurements I was able to make that top and I am definitely going to make another one super sexy I highly recommend that DIY it was also really nice making something without using a commercial pattern it was kind of like old school it took me back to the days when I was first learning how to sew and really reminiscent and nostalgic and I like that so I need to do more of that but nonetheless I love the top to pair with that top I made a pair of pants and those pants were McCall's 8057 I made view C and I cut those in a size 12 but graded them down ultimately to a size 10 um so I wanted them nice and fitted around the bum and the thighs and just flare out just a little bit one thing I learned with those pants is when it comes to commercial patterns at least with McCall's and Simplicity I do need to start making modifications to the bum to the butt area um and that is because I made no I made no adjustments other than just slimming down the pants, tapering them down. And I, I I pull those every time I wear them, I end up pulling the pants up or readjusting them around my waist all the time. Cause my booty crack be hanging out, okay? So I need to make the the back a little <laughs> so I, when I'm modifying these pants, I need to give myself a little more room in the butt. I need to lengthen the butt I don't know I need to watch some videos or read some books on how to do that right but the night of the concert because my back was out and I didn't have anything to conceal my butt I really didn't need I really shouldn't have been wearing panties either because my panties kept peeking out anyway that's a whole nother thing but I still love the pants clearly I'm still wearing them I need to learn how to make that modification when I want those pants tighter around the butt because I recently cut this pattern again in my batch cutting video and I did not make that modification because I don't want the pants fitted like that I actually want them loose and flowy but we'll see how that goes I'll keep you guys posted but that was my concert fit the DIY cow top as well as the McCall's faux leather pants both of those fabrics were sourced from Joanne. Next, after that, I made a shirt dress. You know, it is really going to bother me not having all these pieces in my hand. Alright, so, next was McCall's 8139. And I'm going to have to grab my phone and pull up my Instagram account so I can chronicle these items more efficiently for you all. So McCall's 8139, I used a red plaid that I sourced from Hobby Lobby. 
um i cut a size 14 in this cotton plaid and i made view a i love the pattern i'll definitely make it again this was actually on my list and it's been on my list to make for quite some time i made it in response to the sew your view for september yes september um and uh, i love it here's the thing though that dress is too small i can't breathe in that son of a gun it's tight okay i think shapewear is a beautiful thing and i think it's useful and resource and resourceful in many regards for me i don't like it i don't like a lot of bulk on my body i don't like a lot of layers i like being comfortable and so when it comes to shapewear, I'm really just not that comfortable. I've been trying to use it and implement it more into making my garments look just look better on my body. I wore shapewear with this dress and I still couldn't breathe. So next time around, I'm actually considering just doing a 16 because I could have... I could have used room everywhere like I could have used a little more room across my back even though my bust is small I could have used a lot more room in my stomach it's not something that I would grade out I really do think next time around I'm gonna go to the size 16 so what I'm hoping is I can get one wear out of that plaid dress and then we're gonna give it away okay it was very well executed it's a beautiful dress it just doesn't fit me and it's this one button right here it's really three buttons but that one button right there I'm, I'm sucking it in and I can't I can't sit I can't walk I can't move I breathe the wrong way and that button is gonna pop right off and shoot across the room I can't do it so 16 it is next time around I will make this pattern again I do love it I do love the fabric choice that I have my I think that is my first time working with the plaid I did not match the fabric so the um the design I didn't match my plaid so I didn't line them up I had every intention to do so and then when I started sewing I was like mm, yeah my my patience is not built for this let's move it along so I didn't but it came out really pretty it's very nice I just can't wear it I did end up making a waist belt for this just something really quick just conceal that one button that is holding on for dear life I still don't like it but that's that so after the plaid dress let's see let's go to my Instagram feed then it was time for frock tails Raleigh frock tails it was a wonderful event I'm so happy to have met so many of you looking forward to seeing you guys again soon I actually hate that I'm in Charlotte frock tails because I see so many more of you went to Charlotte <sighs> maybe next year I was just tired my tank was on empty I just didn't have a lot to give so I didn't go I also didn't have the energy or the, or the desire to make something else another formal piece or anything like that so i didn't go do i have regrets yes but it's, it, it is what it is so for raleigh frock tails i made mccall's 7047 and i made um this is one of those mix and match patterns so you mix and match the pieces with this it has um a different bodice a different skirt you also have a peplum as well as a cow and so the version that I made is actually the picture that the model is wearing in the pink metallic dress. So I have the cow, I have the sleeveless bodice, and the long skirt with the train. And for that pattern, I use this crushed stretch velvet sourced from Hobby Lobby. And I love this. Much like the concert fit, I chronicled the making of this dress as well. And I shared it here on my channel. I will link that down below. But I loved this dress. It came together so quickly. It was so comfortable to wear. It was great for the little um, night chill that we had. The weather was beautiful though. But um, I, I loved it. I felt confident in it. Very well posed I felt very um very modest very demure very ladylike okay and it was beautiful it's a stunning piece I love it love it love it I also really enjoyed working with this pattern I will definitely keep this for another formal event this is one of those 
quick and simple patterns it quickly accomplishes your goal i love it love it love it love it and this stretch velvet is just a dream i don't think i've worked with stretch velvet before loved it i used a zigzag stitch and a ballpoint needle when making this dress and everything was very secure so love that after raleigh front tails the weather the season was changing just a bit but i came across this clearance fabric from hobby lobby it was 90 cents a yard and it is a rayon chiffon that i've been eyeballing all summer long all spring actually i think i first saw this fabric the beginning of the year at hobby lobby and i had been eyeballing it and i was like uh I never really make anything with it maybe a blouse maybe a dress but I would never had the gumption to pick it up until it was 90 cents a yard so because it was 90 cents I was like well let me grab a lot so I picked up eight yards of it and in my head I said eight yards could go for a dress it could go for a blouse um, and it could go for a cami um, maybe my daughter and I could have mommy and me dresses whatever I knew I could cook I knew I could accomplish a lot with eight yards. Well, Raven Maureen posted a video and it was of her makes and she mentioned the pattern that I used for this. And I don't know where my pattern booklet is, but this pattern is McCall's 8358. It is a vintage pattern. It's a vintage 70s pattern. I picked it up over the course of the summer. I hadn't touched it because it requires so much fabric. So when I came home with eight yards of fabric for this, I immediately started going through my stash, seeing what all I could use with it, and I stumbled across this pattern. Now, I made a size small, and I did view, view B, and that called for five and a quarter yards of fabric this pattern eats up some fabric it took me a minute to get it done because the details is so intricate it's such a long sew now i think it's rated as easy i think it's rated as easy i can't remember but it takes so long to accomplish and if you know me by now you know i do not like looking at a sewing project for too long okay you got me for one or two sessions one or two sewing sessions and i'm done after that i'm quite irritable and then i'm rushing to get it over with because i'm sick of looking at it and then i probably won't even like the piece after that and it may take me forever to wear i was very much over this project because i worked on it for a good four days <laughs> that sounded ridiculous to say because i know there are some people who work on things for months at a time and they have the patience of an angel. Me, I, I ain't built like that, okay? Four days was a lot. Four sessions, four times coming into the shed to work on this was a lot. But I knew that it was going to take a lot because I worked on a pattern earlier in the year. And I can't remember the pattern number. It's a new look pattern and I made it for Mother's Day. And this pattern reminds me of it a lot it's the maxi dress it is the elastic it's the ruffles or gathers at the bottom this dress required a lot of intricacy that's for sure and so with that mother's day dress i it put me through a lot as well so i was kind of so i knew coming into this project it would take a lot out of me um, but we got it done. Huh, we. I got it done. And it is beautiful. I took my time on this. I was very, very precise about everything. And I think that's another reason why I was ready to be done with it. But she's beautiful. And she's flawless. 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 I was able to squeeze one wear out of her before the temperatures really just kind of got a little too chilly and now they're back up so it was 80 some degrees today so thank you North Carolina unpredictable weather anyway this is beautiful 
once again this fabric was on clearance 90 cents a yard at Hobby Lobby I still have um, two and three quarter three quarters of a yard left so I'll make a top and I might be able to make one for my daughter as well so I'll keep you guys posted on that I have no regrets about this pattern I, because of the time that it took to make it and how precise and intricate it is I don't need a lot of these in my wardrobe I may do this pattern one more time and that's it I said the same thing about the new look pattern um, I said that I would give it one more try just to work out the kinks and the errors and mistakes that I made the first time around which was mostly the sizing I made the size that was too big this time around I went small and I know there are going to be those who are talking about make a mock-up and I ain't got time for all that, okay? It is what it is. I make it. If it don't work out, I try again. Like, I don't want, I don't want to take time to make a mock-up. I don't even want to do a, a wearable mock-up. This is my wearable mock-up, okay? This, this is it. This is all I'm doing. Um, so I made a small with this one, whereas I would have typically made a medium and it worked out perfectly works out perfectly the only thing I, I don't like are the straps I think the straps are too small for me um, I'd like to be able to wrap them around my body a little more or a little better but that didn't stop me from making it again so I love that pattern definitely give it a try so the next let me get some water shot oh. after I made my peasant dress then I started working on my Halloween costume and so for my Halloween costume, I went with Simplicity 9784 for the top and 9751 for the bottom. Now the top I went with View A. I extended the length. I still did not extend the length long enough for me to be comfortable. All day I kept tugging and pulling it back down. Keep in mind I wore it to work because Halloween fell on a Thursday. And I kept pulling it down and I know my, my stomach... I was doing a little bit of a peekaboo throughout the course of the day because I still didn't make it long enough. But it was cute. Now, if I wasn't at work, I wouldn't be self-conscious at all. But at work, I was. And I was pulling it down a lot. Uh, and then for the pants, I made view D. And that was modified as well. I cut. I made the pants at 27 inches long. Then cut. That was cutting at the knee. And then I added a... Um, I added gathered material so I added a piece I don't know how long it was I didn't measure that but I would guess it was probably probably about six to eight inches long and I gathered it and attached it at the leg for more of a flared leg at the bottom I used a stretch velvet that I sourced from Hobby Lobby no it was not Barbie pink it wasn't the perfect shade of pink but it is still beautiful. It is wearable. I can wear that outfit again. I didn't want it to be too costuming because I did want to be able to wear it again. I was able to achieve that. Paired it up with my cowboy hat and all the accessories to look like a western Barbie. And I'm, I'm really pleased with that. That worked out great. That was my first time making that top pattern. Simplicity 9784. I'm certain I'll do it again. But in every regard that I would ever make that pattern I would still be extending the length I do not like crop tops and ever I don't like them at all now this was my third time working with the pant pattern earlier in the year I made view a the asymmetrical skirt I also made view C the long wider leg flared out pants um and so this time around, I made View D modified. I love this pattern. This will be a go-to for me. Now, this week during the work week, I did start working on Simplicity 8655. On my Make 9 Challenge, I do have making a pair of denim jeans as one of my sewing goals. And I'm very happy to say that I accomplished that. I made View B and I did so in a 7-ounce gray denim fabric. That I sourced earlier in the year from Joanne. It has an invisible zipper and it is flawed. I did accidentally cut my pants. I'm so sad about that. 
but I don't think it is the most obvious thing. These pants have pin tucks. Now, my husband said they don't look like jeans, and I did cheat a little bit. So, I did not specify in my Mate 9 what type of denim jeans. I just said denim jeans, and that is because I never really work with denim. It's not one of my go-to fabrics, so I wanted to start easing my way into working with fabrics that I don't typically gravitate with. But I also avoided a fly front. I don't know how to do a fly front zip as of yet. I will teach myself very, very soon. Instead, I use that invisible zipper. These pants have pin tucks, and once again, it is a 7-ounce gray denim. You don't see this very often, and I think they look great. Now, as far as the fit goes, I cut a 14, and I had been going back and forth on whether I need to cut a 14 or a 16. A 16 would have certainly fit me in the waist far better. I carry all of my weight in my natural waist, whereas the rest of me is quite slim. And so fit was one of those things I was truly concerned about, but I did want to go ahead and make this pattern um to get an idea of how the pattern would fit me naturally off of the instructions naturally using the pattern pieces without making modifications and i have a great idea on how to perfect it next time around the pants are baggy up under my butt cheeks i don't like that i also don't know how to fix that now when i had when i was fitting them on the pants have two back pockets and so they are baggy right up under those pockets. And so I didn't know how to take those in successfully, as well as not creating a bunch of bulk in between my legs, like in my crotch. Who wants a, a bunch of material right there? That don't make sense. So I'm going to wear them how they are. It's also tight across. I have to suck it in. I'm probably going to have to wear shapewear with these pants. Because I have to suck it in. When I started cutting the pattern pieces or sewing them up, I saw something about the pants being two inches above your... Yes, the pants are worn two inches above your waist. I didn't know what that would look like on me. That's high up on me. Those, those pants are high, okay? I don't think I like that. But maybe with some shapewear, I'll feel a little more comfortable. I don't know. For future reference though, I'm still going to keep the 14 because everything else in the with the leg fit fit fine. I'm going to figure out how to take in the seat a little bit, but the rest of the leg was nice and slim and fitted and I like that. So instead of going up to a 16, I'm just going to take this 14 and kind of grade the waist, extend the waist a little bit, modify the butt, the seat and then extend the length. So the hem, the inseam is just a hair too short for me. For heels, it's just fine. Um, but they're like cropped pants on me. So for heels, it'll be perfect. But next time around, I'll probably use a blue denim, maybe a black. And so I'd love to be able to wear sneakers with them too. So I like my pants a, a lot longer. So... I'll keep that in mind for next time but it was a very simple pattern to work with this came together in two nights after work so I'm really happy about that it didn't take much time at all so I'll definitely be using this pattern again now I've made the top earlier in the year view a the little shrug I've made that and I love that and I see now why it has the shrug and the high-waisted pants because if I were to pair that shrug with these pants, it would look really, really good. So that is that Simplicity 8655. Looking forward to working with that one again. That one was a pleasure. And now it is time for the final ensemble that I've worked with here lately. And I actually made these three pieces yesterday. I guess I had a little bit of a sewing marathon. I just wanted to pour into myself, get a little bit of solitude, isolate myself from the world. And so I worked on Simplicity 3010. It is a new pattern. It is a Mimi G pattern that was released maybe two months ago. Two months might be a stretch. It might be less than that. But I made all three of the views. So I made the tank, the skirt, as well as the sweater. Now here is the skirt. My waistband is very wonky. Do you see that? And I think that is because while I slimmed up the skirt, I kept the waistband at its original 
uh, width and I don't think I stretched it. I, I don't know. It just, I don't know. Now when I'm wearing it, you, it's still noticeable, but I had my tank covering it and so it wasn't that bad. But this looks bad, okay? I don't like this. This doesn't look good, but it is what it is. Got my little split. I did uh, lower the split. The split was a little too high for work. So I did lower that, but I used this sweater knit from Joanne. It was on clearance in Joanne. And I mentioned this on the batch cutting video as well. So here is the skirt. I am wearing the tank and it is flawed as well. This neckline is not the greatest. Uh, not too happy about that. And also one of the shoulder straps is not that good either. And that is why I don't like working with knit tanks. Uh, knit tops, love it. Knit dresses, all for it. Knit pants, cool, whatever. But knit tanks, I don't like them. And that's because they have, I don't like the neck facing. I don't like the armhole facings. I just don't like working with them. I've never had one that worked out successfully. I actually made one earlier in the year and that was a pain in the butt and so it just doesn't work out for me I'd rather buy a piece like this a very simple piece where I could get it for maybe 10 bucks Walmart Target Amazon as opposed to making one and get it flawed like this I don't like it but it is what it is and then I have the sweater and I haven't added my buttons or my buttonholes as of yet but the sweater is super pretty I'm looking forward to wearing that I did not <laughs> I didn't make markings though so my neck band is not centered with my collar and the stitches the thread is literally camouflaged in this sweater and I can't see it I can't see it in the fabric and so it bothers me it bothers me a lot too because I can also see it when I'm wearing it it just doesn't hang symmetrical but it's so pretty it, it's lovely it is heavy though too like this is a this is a heavy sweater but nonetheless gonna go ahead and finish that up and take pictures of it I also haven't taken pictures of the jeans and I will do that before I drop this video so I can include those clips but those are all the pieces that I've recently made that's a lot because I'm tired I'm I'm tired of I'm tired that's a lot of talking but you know what while you're here let me show you the pieces that I'm working on now now the first thing that's on my sewing table are simple alterations for my family and I's clothing. So my daughter has some leggings in here that have holes, leggings that have holes at the knee that need to get cut off into shorts. I have a pair of shorts that are too small for me and so I think I can size them down to fit her perfectly. My husband has a pair of pants that has a hole. I have some clothes in here that need to be altered, um, slim, taken in some, and things like that. So that is on my sewing table to start working on. And then as we are closing out the year, I still need to finish the makes on my Make 9 challenge. So I checked off my jeans, but I still have three more things to accomplish before the end of the year. That is making a bag, that is a thrift flip, and making a wool coat. So I have Simplicity 9908. It is a bag pattern. It's an easy pattern. Very few pieces, very few notions that I need. So I'm going to use that as my bag pattern and I've already cut my pieces. I am working with a cotton from Hobby Lobby. It is floral, of course. So I cut this during my batch cutting marathon that I shared with you guys. And then in addition to that, I want to start working on some wearable pieces for work. And so I'm working on Simplicity 3003. And I'll be making view B with the nice flowy sleeves. And I have another floral print. This is a knit that I sourced from Joanne. 
and it is a lilac with orange and white I'm so excited about that I batch cut this one as well so these are the next two makes that I want to tackle in the next week or so in addition to making those alterations so you guys stay posted for that I'm sure I'll share if I don't share here then I'll certainly share on my social media pages you can follow me at we see style Instagram TikTok, as well as threads so that's what's on my sewing table I share with you all of my makes I hope you guys enjoyed it if so definitely give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already consider subscribing join the fam I would love to have you as always I love you for watching I'll catch you in the next one peace